Hi, everyone. It's July 30, 2021. Tomorrow, the moratorium on evictions lifts, and millions, millions of Americans are really stressed out, very stressed out. And if you've never faced eviction and have no you know, uh, no one at your back and nowhere to go. You have no idea what it does to you. Home is where Kristen Waldeck spends most of her time now. Cleaning and organizing is what helps keep her mind occupied and off of the uncertain future. We're already living paycheck to paycheck. Kristen is a makeup artist and went without work for most of the pandemic. Her fiance, Chad, was also laid off. While things have slowly been improving, her biggest fear is not having a place to live. We owe back about five months of rent. Um, we pay on time now and we're good now that we're working, um, but it's just what we've missed out on. And we originally had filed in October for rental assistance. Um, and then we applied again in January and February and still waiting on that. And she says everything is closing in. When you say it out loud, it's like, then you realize, like, how stressed you really are. And how hard it is to handle that you might not have a place to live next month. And conversations about what to do moving forward as a family are just too difficult to have. I try to avoid those things because I don't know what to do. Kristen Waldeck is one of many people running low on cash and turning to credit cards to stay afloat. Now she says one of her biggest concerns moving forward is whether or not she'll ever be able to regain control of her finances. It is a financial cliff that is occurring at this point. Jason Bauckham is a financial advisor. Now we spoke about Kristen's situation and if there's anything she can do to regroup. He says it's not too late to reach out to credit card companies to hope. Unless you've been in this position and all of these things, first of all, you're so stressed and that affects your thinking, your decision making, and you're under, you know, the gun in terms of a timeline and you end up and this happens for an awful lot of people, you end up making decisions that you would not ordinarily make, but you do it because you can't see clearly, you can't think clearly. And while you think, you know, okay, well, very often you have no choice. You have, you've run out of choice. So you just have to make you know, the decision that comes along that maybe, you know, you'll be saved because you have nothing else. It's, it's a horrible position to be put in, but this is how our government kept Americans safe. That's right. It kept Americans safe by destroying the economy by making people non-essential so you don't get to have an income because we have to keep you safe. You don't have an income? Well, we'll put a moratorium on eviction. But you don't have an income. So that rent is piling up, still due when the moratorium lifts, which is tomorrow. You had a business, but you're non-essential. Close your doors. Whole lot of businesses close their doors forever. Then you have your non-essential employees who no longer have a job. This was how our fabulous government kept Americans healthy. And everyone who complied and went along and screamed at other people because they weren't wearing a mask or they actually did some research and found out 
a whole lot about this pandemic that mm, doesn't really make sense. You call them conspiracy theorists? You are part of the suffering of millions of, of your fellow Americans and a suffering that for so many never let up. They're in debt. They can't pay their rent. They can't work. They're using credit cards because, oh, before the pandemic, the economy, oh, my God, during the Trump years, it was fabulous. He brought it back to when it was like in the 1960s or 50s. And he did it because he's, he's just Trump. None of it was true. The economy has been artificially propped up since certainly 2008, 2009. QE. Yeah, look, it, it is hard to live seeing what's happening, but it's really hard to see how many people are suffering because of how messed up our population is. If Americans regarded the truth as important, we would never be here. And we're here. $47 billion allocated for uh, Americans who rent. Only $3 billion went out, huh? So $44 billion they're sitting on? Moratorium lifts tomorrow. Millions facing eviction. Do you think maybe there's a, hmm, we want to destroy this country going on? All right, tonight, anxiety is growing across the country as a federal ban on evictions is set to expire on Saturday. Remember, the moratorium was put in place at the height of the pandemic and economic downturn. Congress approved $47 billion in assistance. But as CBS's Janet Shamlin explains, renters are having a hard time getting the aid. LaVita Harvey is well aware the federal moratorium on evictions ends Saturday. I'm terrified. The job offers are coming in, but they're coming in very slowly. The Las Vegas mom of two teens lost both her jobs during the pandemic, unable to pay her $900 a month rent. When you walk up to your door and you see an eviction notice, it's the hardest thing to see in the world when you know that you're a single mother and you have no one to turn to. You will be homeless. Harvey has been approved for more than $9,000 in federal rent help oh, wow. through a local program. The money hasn't come through yet. More than 8,000 other renters in Nevada's Clark County are still waiting for an approval. Despite billions in federal dollars available, some counties and states have been slow to dole it out. Like Nevada, which has given out more than $3 million of almost $125 million available. Tenants really have no idea where to turn to for help. They don't know if they're protected, if they're not protected. So a lot of tenants are just kind of frozen. Even with a moratorium in place, property owners across the country have filed almost a half a million eviction petitions. The Treasury is now promoting a website of resources at consumerfinance.gov. The tool allows you to go online and to find out where in your local community you can go to apply for rental assistance. Money if you're behind on rent, if you're close to being evicted. LaVita Harvey, like so many, has found the path to rent relief a complicated road. It was very hard, but I took the time to educate myself. And I felt like the more that I read and educated myself, the better I could protect myself. Janet, it's incredible. You know, why do they make everything so complicated? Why do they make people in need who are stressed jump through hoops? because they don't want to dole out the money. They don't want to help. And, you know, uh, 
um, something is very wrong and has been wrong for a very, very, very long time. Homelessness has just been increasing. And you know, throughout the decades, what have they been saying the homeless number is? Half a million. It never changes, funny. The economy is getting destroyed. People, yeah, even weather events have put people on the street. The flooding, the fires. But the number never changes. Because Americans, th they need to know that oh, the numbers are low. And then a whole lot of them judge those who are homeless. You know, it, it's... But when you are so stressed, and you've been put out of work, when you're called non-essential, and then you've got to figure out these government programs, it's very difficult. Very difficult, because your thinking, your clear thinking has just been, it's in decline. Yeah, I, <sighs> all right, I, I don't, oh, there's so much I could say on this subject. I see you want to get a, for Demia Burse and her family, the days ahead are uncertain. It's stressful. A single mom in Mississippi, she was forced uh, to quit her job to take care of her three kids when the pandemic hit. Now, she's two months behind on her rent. What happens to you and your three kids if you do not get this assistance? I don't know. I mean, shelter until we can find something. She's among the millions of Americans who face possible eviction once the emergency CDC moratorium on housing evictions expires this weekend. Congress allocated $46 billion to help renters in need. But Burse and others like her say getting that money is hard. How difficult is the application process? They ask for a lot of information like state ID, birth certificates, 2020 tax returns. They make it so hard. Do you have a computer? I was doing it all off my phone. I just want to give a little information about... Which is why now she's attending community info sessions like this one, getting help to submit her application successfully. Thank you. NBC News requested data this month from all 50 states. Of the 41 responding, our analysis found that 26 states had distributed less than 10% of the rental assistance money from their first federal allocation. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, here in Mississippi, 79% of adults who are behind on their rent face likely eviction within the next two months, and that's the highest rate in the nation. Scott Spivey is responsible for distributing Mississippi's $186 million of federal assistance. How much of that have you given away? $10 million has been either approved for payment or out, out the door. What are the biggest... And guess what? He didn't answer the question challenges and actually distributing that money to the people who need it. Awareness of the program, access to technology, and just getting the word out. I have plenty of money to give qualifying tenants in Mississippi. What I need is applications and I need time. Okay, okay so the moratorium lifts tomorrow. What the hell is going on that those in Mississippi don't know about this program? They sure do know how non-essential a whole lot of them have been. Why can't they get that information to the tenants in Mississippi? I'm sorry. Look, we know how corrupt our system is. We've known how corrupt our system is. And we have watched people fall through the cracks over and over and over again. It's it, 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 exceptional, the exceptional American.
historic eviction crisis could be coming to the U.S. You know, you get either broadcasters who are saying it's 6.2 million. Here it's more than 10 million Americans behind in their rent. And left and right, people are getting screwed. Local activists are calling on New Orleans Mayor LaToya Cantrell to close the eviction courts until the end of the COVID pandemic. Moratorium on evictions is set to end soon. Volunteers say the city received money for rental assistance, but they've been, getting, they've been too slow in getting that money distributed to the people who need it. We're calling on those funds to be given out to the people to keep people at homes. So we must prioritize housing. We have a housing crisis in New Orleans. One person who says they were approved for assistance, they were told they would receive a check in 14 days. Well, it's now a month later, and they're still waiting. That person is one of thousands who applied for rental assistance here in New Orleans. Candace Charles spoke to another woman who says she's been waiting even longer to hear if she's been approved for help. This is my home. Eduvina is at risk of losing her home. This may sound familiar as millions across the nation have been at risk of eviction. I've over the past year been without a stable job. It's very difficult. Eduvina is hiding her identity in fear of retaliation from her landlord. She applied for rental assistance in February. Very much so anxious. Um, nobody wants to be evicted. It is now just days from the final nationwide ban on evictions ending. And the U.S. Census Bureau reports that as of July, 3.6 million people in the U.S. said they faced eviction. About 50 new cases just this week. Austin Badon is clerk of First City Court. His office processes eviction filings. He tells me he expects to see more eviction cases come Saturday. Edufina fears she could be next. I just have to wait here until they take me to court and evict me. I don't even know what I'm going to do. The federal government has $47 billion for rental assistance, but so far only about $3 billion has been distributed to states. Mayor Latoya Cantrell held a rental assistance event at the beginning of June for 5,000 applicants. 14,000 apply. The mayor's office told Eyewitness News Thursday that about 800 of those applicants have received funding. They were wow. Did you hear that? Were you listening closely? Okay. We have funding for 5,000 when, when tens of thousands just in that area need help. And 800 of the 14,000 that applied for assistance, only 800 got funding, not the 5,000. Somehow, bankers, corporations, that get bailed out, they get their funds immediately. Huh. Not the American people. We're told it was going to be 14 days. There's still no check in the mail for most people. And yeah, wait for that check in the mail. So, yep, landlords already filing. There have been um, half a million filings already. Millions of evictions are coming. Starting this Saturday, you're going to see more of these on doors. The eviction moratorium is ending, and many experts are worried a lot of people are going to end up on the streets. I do see the possibility of landlords filing a, 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 a torrent of eviction notices. Which may lead to more areas like this where people don't have a place to call home. It could turn out to be... Um, catastrophic. As the eviction moratorium ends Saturday, prices for rent are skyrocketing. And Ray Stedman with St. Matthew's House says there's a waiting list at the shelter. Right now, if you needed shelter, you would be looking at a couple of weeks of wait time prior to being able to access a shelter bed. St. Matthew's House is preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. We'll do what we have to do to try to meet the demand, and I know the other agencies in the area will be the same way. Experts worry there'll be a flood of renters looking for a new home after this weekend. And a supervisor with the Lee County Housing Authority says the amount of people who already need affordable housing is astronomical. 
Law professor at FGCU, Pamela C., says the COVID-19 spike may change things. With the resurgence of COVID, we are also seeing a change in the rules. It is possible that they may look at this and say, you know what, we may need to extend the moratorium even further. And guess what? That may happen. The Democrats will become the heroes. They haven't moved on anything yet. They're waiting. Oh, we're at the final minute, not hour. We are at the final minute. Here you go. Do they care about the Americans who are renting, who need help? No. Could they come to the rescue to actually destroy small landlords who are still hanging on? Yeah. That Biden has, well, there's nothing I can do. It's up to Congress. Really, Biden? How many laws do you violate? Let's think about that immigration law that presidents have decided that they can do whatever the hell they want to do with an executive order, even close down the economy, making a whole lot of Americans non-essential, destroying their businesses, destroy their finances, and leave them, you know, well, the moratorium lifts tomorrow. Stressed beyond belief. It's for their health. They want to make sure their health is good. So put them in a chronic stress circumstance. That's going to, that's really going to help their health. Biden, uh, Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton, the executive order. Who gives a shit what Congress has passed and legislated? I don't care that I'm supposed to execute the law. I'm going to write laws. I'm going to bypass laws with that executive order. But now Biden can't do it. The Supreme Court has said 18 months into this pandemic, when the moratorium is about to lift, think about the timing of everything that is taking place. Supreme Court, 18 months in, says that that moratorium was unconstitutional. I thought the Constitution was dead. You got these mini tyrants all over the country deciding for themselves. Hey, I'm going to make it a law. It's not a law, but I say, hey, this is what you have to do in order for me to protect you from that, oh, coronavirus that yeah what's the recovery rate oh 97 percent well anywhere in between 97 and 99 Eh. and Americans can't figure out anything those Americans who have been believing lies forever because it's easy and they're lazy and they don't want to know the truth, so they remain willfully ignorant. They can't see that our country has been taken over and is being destroyed when it's so in our face. No, they'll call you a conspiracy theorist. They'll roll their eyes. They'll claim that you don't care. You want people to die. Oh, really? Well, they are to blame for a whole lot of people who have already died, who have already committed suicide because they've lost their businesses and their finances, went to crap. How many Americans were living paycheck to paycheck before the pandemic hit? You heard that woman in the beginning who's crying right? Living paycheck to paycheck. And we've known this. So the pandemic comes about, you're non-essential, you don't get to have an income anymore. Ah, we'll put a moratorium on that, you know, rent that you have to pay. But you have no income, you can't pay that rent, and it just piles up, and then boom, the moratorium lifts. Landlords want the money immediately. They don't get it. 
You're evicted. It's the cruelty in this country. You know, I've seen it. I've experienced it. But now it is so in our face. Oh, I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what to say to my kids right now. The clock is ticking for renters like Deborah Chamberlain, who has until Saturday to vacate her home. I have to clean this whole place. I have to paint a few spots. There's a few little spots around here I have to paint. There's a back wall I have to paint, and I have to clean the yard. She's a single mom that lives with her two girls in Salt Lake City. But right now, she doesn't know where she's going to go. It's, it's a horrible feeling as a parent. No parent wants to be in that position, not to be able to tell their kids it, what the answer is going to be. It's not something you want to have to be in a position to do. A nationwide ban on evictions was put in place last September. It did give us a sense of security. The CDC has extended it three times, saying last month that this was their final extension of the moratorium. If the ban was still in place, that would give me more time to look. And because of the housing market, that gives me a limited time um, to find something with the ban being in place. From homes to apartments, it's getting harder to find an affordable place to live in Utah. The market's hard right now to find anything as soon as... And that's also what's happening. Rents are skyrocketing. Vacancies are going in a snap. You're looking at so many people who are looking for homes, can't find anything, can't afford it, how many businesses have shut down permanently? A whole lot. And you listen to this despicable, disgusting human being in the White House claim that the economy has come back. Washington Post, just a couple of days ago, actually came out. It, 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 the lies are stunning, and it's making me sick. It's making me sick to my stomach, facing all of these lies, facing Americans who lie, facing Americans who don't care. And I'll go out saying that if Americans on the whole really cared, we would not be living this. We just wouldn't be living this. They cared about the truth. They held people accountable. You know, man, well, listen to this nut job who is really, it's, it, that, that this is the House Speaker, it's scary. Uh, the moratorium for eviction is a COVID initiative related. Volume level on all videos now are so different. They used to be consistent across the board. Now, I don't know what's going on. ...to the uh, uh, intensity of the issue. And for $46 billion was um, allocated both in the year-end omnibus uh, last December as well as in the uh, rescue package, $46 billion. This money has largely gone out to the states and local governments to implement and to give to the renters so they can pay the rent, which helps the, the landlords, of course, too. And, and now we don't even know where that money is because she comes out and says, you know, the money has been um, distributed to states and local governments. Well, we also heard that the states and local governments didn't get the money. Then we hear they do have the money. It just didn't get to the American people. Okay. Look, this woman is real. How much money, how much money has she made in, in the Congress? How much money has she made behaving in a criminal fashion with her insider trading? 
This woman has so much money. Her husband has so much money. It, it's become the millionaire club. That's what Congress now should be called, the millionaire club. Why don't you help those Americans in your communities who are facing eviction? Oh, right. No, you can't. Right? These people live lives that most Americans can't even imagine. They have been brought down from their policies and people still put them on a pedestal. Jesus. And uh, the fact is that almost $50 billion was allocated, $46 billion, less than 10% of that has been spent. Around $3 billion is reported to me, but let's say it would be 10%. Why should the, uh, the renters be punished for the fact that the system did not put money in their pockets to pay the rent uh, to, um, uh, to the landlords. Why are you coming out speaking about this now when the moratorium lifts tomorrow? Why did you not work on getting that system right to help the American people that you destroyed based on, oh, well, we've got to shut down the economy. There's a pandemic. Why? Oh, right. Those, the uh, January 6th, that's right. We have to focus on, you know, white supremacy. Yeah, we've got to focus on uh, what happened on January 6th. We've got to hold those hearings. We've got to do this. We've got to do the Bullshit. Okay, these people have their own agenda. Americans, can you not see that? What the hell is wrong with people? You know, I, I would scratch all power given to individuals in this country because Americans with power, when you got these messed up Americans, they use their power and they destroy God, I, I, I am so. So that's where we come to this. It's like, well, CDC, you have defined uh, this, and these people have not gotten the money. So this is, I think this is something that will work out. It isn't about any more money. The money is there, resting in localities and uh, governor's offices across the country. So we would like the CDC uh, to uh, expand the moratorium. That's where it can be done. And then, and, and of course, with the public message. Uh, wait a second. It's, this was, okay. It's just public. Okay. July 30, the Supreme Court came out a couple of days ago. They're ruling the CDC moratorium. <laughs> Uh, was unlawful, uh, unconstitutional. Biden says, there's nothing I can do when he wants to do something, he just does it, regardless of whose, you know, uh, uh, duty it is, Alec, those uh, duties in the Constitution. Uh, he said, it's up to Congress, and she's throwing it back to the CDC, that's what the Supreme Court said, no, you can't. Is it, did I hear that right? Did I? Any more money, the money is there, resting in localities and uh, governor's offices across the country. So we would like the CDC uh, to uh, expand the moratorium. That's where it can be done. And then, and, and of course, with the public message of governors, mayors, et cetera, give the money for its purpose. Uh, how does that work, Nancy? How does that work? CDC can't. Supreme Court said 18 months later, oh, CDC can't. They don't have the authority. 
What what the hell is I can't believe this country. It truly is a moral cesspool. To the ranchers. So this is uh, this is uh, to me a very uh, an imperative that it be done and in other words Congress isn't going to do it, I guess. If she's going to throw it back to the CDC that well they can't do it because the Supreme Court said that. Biden confirmed that by saying, well, I can't do anything. Uh, Congress has to do something. Boy, it just seems kind of deliberate that they're destroying the ordinary American. But man, that banker money, that corporate money, those bailouts, billions. You got it. We'll give it to you in less than 24 hours. These people are sick, twisted, just grossly it's not I mean I, I can't even say they're immoral they're sadistic and it's I, 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 I don't know what to do I don't know what to do I mean <sighs> I can't stand feeling so helpless I can't stand it. It's it's really getting to me. Now, well, forget about me. We're we're just we're done. That um, uh, as I say, timing is not everything on this, except that the moratorium ends. But again, if if they know that the money will be released. Then we'll go there. there. There are all kinds of talk among lawyers who thought this and that uh, in the executive branch. I don't know. I don't want to be critical of what they have because we, they just made the statement yesterday. But we are uh, we're not going away from this issue, whether it's now or shortly thereafter. Uh, it is, I mean, have you ever seen a, an eviction? Sometimes even the law enforcement people go into these apartments. Oh, here she comes. Oh, she cares so much. She cares so much about the ordinary American who has been literally brought down to nothing based on her policies. Look at her. Oh, wow. Nancy Pelosi. Is are crying because they know they're going to do something that's going to put baby's cribs out on the street, personal belongings out on the street. It happens like that. Passers-by can even take that stuff. These people have been evicted, now have to find another place to live. And if I had your money, Nancy, I'd be helping so many of them. I couldn't not. I would have to because... That's what happens when you genuinely care. Listening to this, it's just yet another disgusting display of an acting job by a sick, twisted, malignant narcissist who has made a shitload of money off the backs of Americans. To take this stuff that's now been on the street, it is, it is the most heart-wrenching and so in defiance of everything that we say we are about in the Gospel of Matthew. When I was needed shelter, you, you gave it to me. That the words of the Lord. So oh I... Uh, yeah. She's a devout Catholic. Hmm. Yeah. Christians. Well, I suppose I should just go and say, enough said. Enough said. There's so many videos now. Biden calls on Congress to extend eviction moratorium. Remember, when presidents have an agenda, they don't care about the law.
Okay. Well, I've watched enough of these broadcasts to see people who are freaking out, who lost their job during the pandemic. And I'm talking about a whole lot. 80,000 in Phoenix area. Oh, boy. And think about how many Americans, when you're living in chronic stress, how many Americans have been manipulated to go after their fellow Americans, not going after the real enemy? No. Let's not go after the real enemy, the policies, especially of the Democrats. And by, by the way, may I remind everybody, put that mask back on. Oh, my God. The Delta variant cases are just exploding. The United States has the most cases in the world. Hospitals, we're back to the same script that we heard when the pandemic first started. And millions to be put on the street. Uh -huh. Seems a little odd. Kind of, I don't know, conflicts with the narrative now. You put that moratorium back in place, extend it, and you screw over the small landlords. But it doesn't help the tenants because... The economy is not back on track, as the Washington Post said. It has been essentially destroyed. So all of these tenants that can't pay their rent now, a mor moratorium, okay, they're still not paying their rent, eventually it comes due. You're watching the destruction of the United States, the destruction of certainly the middle class, bringing everybody down, and who survives will be in the lowest class, and a whole lot of people won't survive because a whole lot of people are putting people out on the street and they have nowhere to go, no one at their back. They've been depleted of money. Americans need to work with Americans. Otherwise, those Americans who are doing nothing and don't have to suffer any of these consequences, you may very well have to suffer the consequences from your fellow Americans who are getting destroyed. Because a whole lot of Americans don't know what happens to them when they get really stressed out. What happens? A regression sets in. And a whole lot of Americans, when really stressed out, become violent. What, is this, what has this done in terms of domestic violence? A whole, well, that has exploded. These are the people who have done this. These people. There's no way to change them. My hope always rested in the, my fellow Americans. I've lost hope. Okay. Yeah, I... I don't know what to say. I, I just, I wish I could say something. I, I wish I could be of help. I wish I could, I've been destroyed. I've suffered the consequences. And guess what? Once again, I am. And I'll leave it at that. I am amazed at how utterly, utterly, Excuse my French, fucked up Americans are.
it's a whole lot is coming to all of us. So every day now we get to see more and more destruction and a whole lot of Americans are just so, they have been so manipulated to fight one another. <laughs> and these people live their fabulous lives at our expense. See, what I, I can't take is how obvious it is. But when you have, you know, your Americans who don't care about anyone except their own self, well, then you can just watch your decline and we're going fast.